I'm praying for Kingdom Life Church this morning. So can we please bow our heads for prayer? Father God, thank you for this day. We have a good day right now, oh God. Father God, thank you for letting us see a brand new day right now, oh God. Father God, bless this service as everybody is sitting here right now, oh God. Father God, thank you for letting, God, thank you for letting these people come to church today and hear your word right now, oh God. Father God, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. How many of us come in here today to serve the Lord? Amen. How many of us come in here today to give God some praise? How Amen. many of us come in here to give God what Amen. we owe him on today? For he's a great God, and he's a wonderful God. And right now, we'll turn you back into the hands of our anointed praise team. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Won't he do it? How many of you know Jesus will? Yes, he will. Oh, yeah, Jesus will, oh, ooh, open doors that I cannot see, Jesus will.
How many of you know he will? worthy on this morning. Praise and glory. 
another chance. pray father god we thank you today lord we didn't come into this building for rhyme or for reason we didn't come for a regular program schedule lord god we came to be in your presence lord god even though we can be in our closet in our prayer closets alone but your word says where two or three are gathered then you shall be in the midst so father god as we come to get today as we gather today as your people, as your body in this place today, Lord God, we want to honor your presence today, Lord God. We want to say, go before us, anoint us afresh to be in this place, Lord God. As we lay ourselves before your throne today, Lord God, we ask that you cut us of any ungodly thing, any impurity, Father God. That as we live our lives before you, we may glorify your name. We pray for your anointing to fall in our lives and in this house, Lord God. Lord, we don't take this for granted. We don't do this to, to just do it, Lord God. We want to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. We want our lives to be a living sacrifice, pleasing, a pleasing aroma that the world may know that Jesus Christ lives. So, Father God, we pray for your people today. We pray for the shepherds of this house, Lord God, that you anoint them for the task. You anoint them for the assignment. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, let the people of God shout amen. amen. Come on, can you put your blessed amen. hands together? Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. time we ask that you raise your hand just raise your hand well, amen we're all family come on let's bless God for being amen. together amen. again in his presence I don't take it for granted that when I lay my head on the pillow that I'm going to wake up in the morning I know sometimes I fall asleep and I don't say my prayers but I get up and I just have to think like God you didn't have to wake me up it wasn't by my goodness it was by your grace and your mercy. So we're here today to honor his grace and his mercy. Amen? Amen. Well, family, uh, today is Youth Sunday. That's why we have some of our youth Amen. participating in that. So let's bless God for our youth. We had Sister Embry do our opening prayer. We thank God for our youth. They're excited about what's going on. And um, so let, let's continue to, you know, allow them to be utilized in that. We thank God for them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, Family, it's giving time. It's giving time. Amen. 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 What I love about God is that God is a giver. The Bible tells us in John 3.16, it says, God so loved the world that he gave his That's only right. son. And God gave us something that we couldn't have generated ourselves. He gave us his son. He gave us himself. Amen. Amen. And so as we continue to see in our lives, God is going to give and give and give so that as he gives, he transforms us so that we can give and give and give. Amen. Look here at this ministry, we believe in the time we, we give our first of our, our, our first of our increase of our income. We give that to God. We honor the Lord with that. We know what the word says. If, if it, it's not your time to tithe uh, or give up your first fruit, we ask that you pray, ask the Lord, you know, what, what shall I give? The Bible says that the liberal soul will grow. The life of the liberal, liberal person, the generous person grows. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Our ushers will serve you at this time. If 
If you're worshiping with, a, with us online, we thank God for you. Come on, let's bless God for our online worshipers. You can also participate in this time of worship. Giving is worship. Giving is worship. And so the, the information will be on your screen. You can click, go to our website. You can do text to give. All that information will be online right now. If you're ready to give, you can just lift your, your, your seed to heaven. If you're giving by text to give or phone, just lift your phone to heaven. We want to honor the Lord with our gifts. We don't want to take uh, this for granted, this time for granted. Remember, a million has six zeros and a one at the front. <laughs> We thank God for what he's doing in this ministry. We know that his grace is on this house. He's doing some awesome things. And so we thank God. We want to continue to sow into the vision of what God is doing. Let's pray. Let's let's honor the Lord with our seed. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for we thank you for life. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your uh, eternal glory that you shine upon us every day when we open our eyes. So Father God, as we offer up these seeds into the kingdom of God. Lord, we pray that it honors you, Lord God. We pray that it goes into the various uh, um, respects of ministry, Lord God, that it goes into somebody's life, that they will increase and ministry will grow and then lives will change and lives will come to the kingdom. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Let everyone say amen. amen. In the hands of our ushers. My God it's me so strong so mighty my god plans for me goes beyond my wildest dream my god is good so good God for your obedience. We pray that God continues to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. We know that he will do that because that's his word. Amen? Amen. Come on, family. Let's bless God one more time. Amen. Well, family, are you ready to grow deeper in God today? Amen. Come on. I, I'm, I want, do you want to grow in the word of God today? Amen. Amen. Well, family, we have uh, one of our own uh, ministers of the house, Minister Myrna Baptiste, will bring Amen. the word today. Amen. 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 Look, family, as she come, we ask that we all stand, not because of the minister, but because of the word of God as she comes before and deliver the word of God. Amen. 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 Look, we ask this one thing. As she comes forward, we ask that you continue to pray for her, that God flows through her spirit, God's spirit flows through her. As she has studied the word of God, but she actually delivers the word as he has it for us to receive. Amen. 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 Before she comes, our worship team will have a hymn of preparation. Receive them by saying amen. 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 Or the things that I've been through. You can't feel. You can't feel my pain. What I had to go through. What I had to go through to get here. You'll never understand my prayer. You'll never understand my praise. Don't try. Don't try to figure it out. Because. Because my worship. Oh, my worship. My worship is for real. This for those who have a story to tell. My worship. Because my worship 
My worship. My worship is for real. Here's your chance. You don't know. You don't know my story. Or the things. Or the things that I've been through. You can't feel. You can't feel my pain. What I had to. What I had to go through to get here. You'll never understand my praise. You'll never understand my praise. Don't. Don't try to figure it out. Because. Because my worship. Oh, my worship. My worship is for real. How many worships are for real? Because my worship. Your worship. My worship is for real I've been I've been through too much not to worship him I've been through too much not to worship him Worship is for real. My worship is for real. Hallelujah. 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 My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Hallelujah. 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 My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Hallelujah. 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 My worship is for real. For the down, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise 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 you. Hallelujah. 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 You took me all the way. My worship is for real. It takes every inch of my body because my worship to give 
you the proper way. My worship is for real. I got a story to tell. Because my worship. Work it, God. My worship is for real. Hallelujah all over the building. Hallelujah all over the building. Is it just me? Or do you need to be pumped and primed this morning? You don't know my story. Hallelujah. You don't know what I had to go through to get here. You don't know how the enemy fought me on every side. You don't know how he tried to keep my mouth closed. You don't know how he tried to keep me in bondage. You don't know how he tried to keep reminding me of my past. So when you see me cry, when you see me praise, and when you see me worship, I need you to know that my worship, it is for real. And maybe you don't have anything to worship him for, but in case you don't, I don't mind worshiping him and praising him all by myself. I didn't need the praise team to tell me to stand. Because I got a praise on the inside of me. And this morning, I will get it out. God is too good for us to sit down on it. God has done too much for us to sit down on it. God is too good for us to sit down on it. thank you that if we can't be real with nobody else Lord we can be real with you if we can't get naked in front of anybody else Lord we can get naked in front of you Lord if we can't tell our secrets to anybody else Lord God we can tell them to you and because of who you are Lord we give you all the glory this morning We give you all the praise. And we serve notice to Satan this morning. You must flee. You must flee. You must flee. Your assignment has been canceled in the name of Jesus. And the saints respond by putting your blessed hands together and saying amen, amen, and amen. Would you please put your blessed hands together for this anointed praise team? I pray that God will continue to use them for his glory. I would like to thank Pastor Maurice and Lady Trinice this morning for an opportunity to share the word with my fellow brothers and sisters. I would like to thank God again this morning for choosing me even when I didn't feel I was chosen. And I thank you, the people of God, for receiving not me this morning, but the God that resides on the inside. This morning, the scripture will come from Joel, the second chapter, the 25th through the 26th verses. And it reads, I will restore you to you. The years that the swarming locust has eaten. The hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter. My great army, which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. You may be seated in the presence of a magnificent God. Have you ever searched on TV and went through your TV guide looking for something to watch and for whatever reason you just couldn't find anything that sparked your interest? Or am I the only one? About a week ago this happened to me. 
and I usually don't watch TV. I'm not a TV watcher. I like to read. But I came across a show, and the show was about restoring things, which is very relevant to our text today. And the host of the show stated that people bring things into him that are of value. Remember the word value today. They bring things into him that are of value because they're too good to throw away. But they trust him to restore it, not only to its original shape, but where it's useful and even better than before. Things that we can think about that's of value that may be restored could be antiques, cars, furniture. Even after the flood, some people had to have their pictures restored, doors, and a whole lot more. But in explaining the different things that needed to be restored, what he said that made the most difference to me was value. That's why I stated, remember the word value. You would never restore something that you didn't find valuable. In the beginning, when God created us in his image and in his likeness, he had a lot of things to say about us that should make us confident in how valuable we are to him. He said that we were fearfully and wonderfully made. We weren't made in the image of anybody else. He said he even made us in his image and in his likeness. When the host received all of these things in and the customer came to bring them, they had to have a type of assurance though. They had to have some trust. Because it takes a lot for you to take something very valuable to you and turn it over to somebody else. When it's valuable to you, you kind of want to keep it to yourself. It might be toe up from the flow up, but at least it's mine. So if I'm going to take it and put it in the hands of somebody else, I got to have some trust. Isn't it amazing how we tend to trust people who we know are full of flaws and won't trust God knowing he's flawless? We belong to him anyway. So when we go back to God, we're going back to the restorer. He wants us to be restored. You know, in the beginning, there was a little altercation in the garden. I'm sure most of you know the story. It was God and it was Adam. And they was communing with each other. They were communicating. And then he said, I don't want you to be by yourself, so I'm going to send you a helpmate. So Eve came on the scene. But when Eve came on the scene, it was a disconnect between God and Adam alone. Do you know that the enemy looks for distractions? He looked for a reason to get in between you communing with God. I never said Eve was a bad thing because he put her there for a reason. But she also came with a distraction. Because instead of Adam talking directly to God, he was able to even talk to Eve. And he wasn't directly deceived, but he was deceived through Eve. And oftentimes... We become deceived because we've lost communication with God. We're looking for restoration, but we're looking for it in the world. So we're looking to the world for approval. We're looking to the world for amens. We're looking to the world for pat on the backs. When God said, I made you, I created you, and who can restore you better than me? He loves us so much that he gave everything he had. He gave his only begotten son just so we could be restored back with him. He know we were born into a fallen, sin-sick world, but he said, you don't have to stay that way. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to offer you something that if you believe it, accept it, and receive it, and then confess it with your heart that you can be restored. So I came to let you know this morning, don't let nobody tell you you are so separated from God that you can't be restored because his first intentional point that he made was to bring restoration and healing to this land. What kind of restoration did he bring? Kingdom restoration. 
the reason it's kingdom restoration is in order to have restoration done by the king, it makes it kingdom restoration. I didn't say mandom. I said kingdom. So we got to go to the king to be fully restored. We're li- the, man, the host of the TV show was doing it for his glory. But when God restores, he does it for his glory. But do you know that he also wants you to be a part of this process? Because once you're restored, he expects you to go back and get other people and help to restore them by bringing them to him. Oftentimes, we're valuable and we know it, but we're surrounded by people who feel worthless, who don't know their value, who feel like because of the way they were born, because of choices that they made, because of things that they did, that they're not valuable. You know, because your mama didn't raise you, because your mother was molested, because your daddy denied you even after getting a paternity test, because you were the wayward child. Yeah, because you went to prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you got a background. There is nothing too hard for God. He didn't count you out even with man counted you out. He said, I count you in and together we will win. You are somebody. If nobody else ever told you, I need you to get it in your heart and your mind and in your spirit today, you are valuable. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. In talking to a counselor, I told her about the way I had started feeling. Because you do know you can be saved and still feel invaluable, right? You can be preaching to people and still feel invaluable, right? You can help everybody else to feel important. And you feel this little. She said, I need you to make some positive affirmations. Start speaking positive affirmations over yourself. And I struggled with that. I looked in the mirror. I said, I'm supposed to say I'm beautiful. I got a birthmark. I got a flaw. And I'm supposed to say I'm beautiful. Mm. I had a child out of wedlock. And I'm supposed to say that I'm saved. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And God can use me. I dare not stand before you today as if I don't have no issues. As if I don't have any flaws. But I stand before you as a child of God that's been restored by the Redeemer. And a living witness that he still is in the restoring business. See, I couldn't speak positive affirmations when I looked in the mirror that man made. But when I looked in the mirror of the word of God, I saw all kind of things thrown out at me. He said that you shall be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower, that I will be with you even until the end of the world, that there is no weapon formed against you that's going to be able to prosper, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. When I looked in the mirror of the word, I began seeing positive affirmations, and no devil in hell can change my mind. Because he said we should speak those things that are not as though they were. So I don't know what you're speaking over yourself, but today I advise you and I encourage you and I beseech you, brother and sisters, to speak positive affirmations according to the word. It doesn't matter what the mirror show you. The man-made mirror. I need you to look into the mirror of God's word. And remind yourself that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I know it sounds good when I read the scripture this morning, but I just want to give you a little background on it. See, God was dealing with Israel. You know, Israel did what they wanted to do. Even after God delivered them, set them free, they still did things their own way. They kind of still rebelled and They did things wrong, but it never changed God's mind about what he promised. He promised restoration. Why am I talking about Israel? Because the promise wasn't made to one person. It was made to a whole nation. And that shows me what affects me don't just affect me. 
it affect the whole nation. What affects me don't just affect me, it affect the whole kingdom. Because I'm supposed to be a part of the kingdom of God. So when I fall and I hurt, my sister and my brother fall and they hurt. And the Bible says that we should, the strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. So once you're restored, I encourage you to go back and restore somebody else. Stop talking down to your sister who already beat up and give her a hand up. Stop being so hard on your brother who went to jail because you never went. Maybe help him to get a job or get some education to stop him from going back. We as elders, it's Youth Sunday. We as elders are supposed to be looking out for the children. Even as adults in the kingdom of God, you have some people that are in adult bodies, but they're still babes in Christ. We are held accountable for not doing what God has called us to do. God kept his promise even after na the nation did what they wasn't supposed to do. Joel used the locust invasion as an illustration of God's judgment. After the people stopped sinning and repented, that's when the promise to restore came to fruition. He didn't just give them what they lost. He gave them even more than they had. Then he made a promise. He said, my people will never be put to shame. Hold your head up. Hold your head up. If God say he'll never put you to shame, what's your shame of? Your life and what you've been through is only a testimony. That's a testament of who you were, and then it's an actual picture of who you are. And I need you to know, don't get caught up in that, because the more you live, the more you should be becoming. We have never arrived. So don't get to the place where you feel like I've arrived. No. Sin is always there. It's always present. And it's always a chance you could go back, but my prayer is that you don't. And if you do, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. It's as easy as what Israel did, repent and go back. But in order for you to repent, you first have to acknowledge that you did something wrong. I don't think it's a problem with knowing that God wants to restore us. I think one of the problems is we don't feel like we need to be restored. I ask for forgiveness, and that's good. I don't know about you, but I want it all. 99 and a half won't do. I don't just want to be better because I was forgiven. I want all that God has for me. So if restoration is a part of the process, you have to be willing to go through it. The first point I want to make today is, and it sounds probably crazy, but I'm going to make it make sense. It's vandalism. Vandalism. Vandalism is a crime of intentionally defacing or destroying property that belongs to somebody else. Mm. Vandalism is what Satan does. He put the sin right in front of us, and we buy into it, and then he begins to destroy the image that God has made in his likeness. But God has a keen eye for vandalism. And he had a solution to the problem before the problem already started. It's restoration. He realized that they had been vandalized. That's why the locusts, all of the things that they needed to eat to survive, y'all, it had been overtaken. They didn't have anything, so how were they going to survive? I'm reminded of Job. Job wasn't doing anything wrong. But... God put Job on Satan's mind. Because of what Israel had done and because of all that they had gone through, he allowed what happened to happen so that he could get the victory and the glory out of it. So he knew even though they were acting out and doing things that they weren't supposed to do, he knew the end result would be restoration. What am I saying? Whether you vandalize yourself by making the wrong choices or the wrong moves, it's okay. God is aware. You do know that some vandalism is not self-inflicted. Sometimes we're vandalized by other people. Yeah, your name is scandalized. Lies are told on you. 
you're accused of things that you didn't do. All of that is a part of vandalism, but God knew that too. And just like he didn't change his mind with Israel, he didn't change his mind about you. In Genesis 3, Satan vandalized what God created and said was good. That can be found in Genesis 1 and 31. By introducing sin to the world, that's how he vandalized. Satan has continued on his rampage of destruction ever since. He attempts to deface all that God has made. His vandalism twists come in the form of sex and fornication, the gift of cursing and falsehood, the gift of justice into bribery and oppression. Those are just some ways he used it, uses vandalism. But John 10 and 10 says, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. God will restore everything that the canker worms try to take over. In the New Testament, the hearts of the Christians are considered as the temple of God. When Satan vandalized it with sin and sorrow, God restores through Jesus Christ. We were made new creations when we placed our faith in Jesus. That's what give us the up on him. We don't have to find Jesus. We already in him. We just got to learn to talk to the restorer so things can be put back in his correct perspective. I won't be before you long. I'm already on point two. Validation. To validate something is to give official sanction, confirmation, and approval of. God alone is all the validation that you need. How does he validate you? I stated it early. He made you in his image and in his likeness. He delights in you. He stubbornly loves you even when you're unlovable. God is not against you. He is for you. And his plans for you are always good. Romans 12 and 6 says, he has given you unique gifts and talents and strengths. So you need to know because you're uniquely made, you've been validated by God. It said he has given you unique gifts and talents. What does that mean? No two people are the same. What you can do, I may not be able to do it, but it doesn't make me less validated. The way I speak and the way you speak may not be the same, but it still does not make you less validated. God alone is our validation, and any question you have, you can go to him with it. But unfortunately, some people seem to struggle with this and they question themselves. What makes people feel they are less valuable or less worthy to God. We're designed to want validation, so that means it's a feeling of significance. We seek validation from people. Why? Because we want to fit in. Not knowing how valuable we are, we were never created to fit in, but to be set apart. So why are you seeking validation from man? Some people seek validation from their job. Some people seek validation in their money. Some people seek validation through their houses and the cars that they drive. But the only thing that's going to last is what you do for Christ. So seek and know that you have the validation that you need in Christ. Stop trying to get it in accomplishments in being connected to certain people, in having a status quo. God don't care who you hang with. That don't matter. He does not care that you got 30 degrees. That don't matter. He wants your heart to be pure. He wants you to have a mind of Christ. He wants you to do things according to the word of God and not according to man. Proverbs 4 and 23 said, 
This will kill your heart, the wellsprings of life. What will kill it? Seeking the approval of man. When we seek God and God alone, we'll have everything that we need. Not only will God validate us, he validated his promises. If he said it, that settles it. He's a promise keeper. The Lord is faithful to all of his promises and loving towards all that he has made to us. That's Psalms 145 and 13. Need I say more? I think, I think validation has already been made. Which leads me to my third and final point. Victory. Victory. All God is victory, and victory can be found in him. Although we have to go through things and suffer, it doesn't exclude us from victory. 1 Peter 5 and 10 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish. I don't know what you heard, but I heard victory all over that thing. He said... He will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Victory is already yours. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were no longer a victim. You became victorious. Victory is yours for the taking, but you got to want it. You have to know that you are victorious. You have to speak like you're victorious. You got to walk like you're victorious. You have to live like you're victorious. You have to act like you're victorious. And know that victory is yours. Being restored is victory all in itself. When God gives us more than we lost or more than was taken, that's victory. I spoke about Job earlier. Job went through all kind of trouble. He went through hell and high water. But he got double for his trouble. We won't double, but we don't want to go through nothing. He promised us restoration. He said, I'll give you double for your trouble. But you got to know that victory is yours. Because no athlete starts out running to get halfway and stop. He desires victory. So he won to the end. So he can get the victory. I encourage you today to keep running. Victory is already yours. I don't want you to see defeat. I don't want you to see failures. I need you to see victory right before you. Victory is mine. You got to start declaring victory is mine. I told Satan to get behind. Because victory today is mine. We are victorious. We are mighty. We are strong, and victory belongs to Jesus, but it also belongs to us. No longer are we victims of our past. We're new creatures in Christ. My new name is Victorious. My new name is Victorious. I'm a victor in everything that I do. I might have been a victim, but now I'm Victorious. The mirror that I looked in said you're victorious. So that's the positive affirmation I told you about earlier. You have to want to be victorious. You have to know that you are already victorious. When you chose Christ, victory was handed to you. So why are you around here walking up and down the floor all night long, wondering if he can when he told you he will? Why are you going to the doctor's appointments, listening to the report, and leaving defeated? He didn't say you might be healed. He said, by his stripes, you already healed. Why are you in a relationship and it's a whole lot of strife going on? And you're wondering, should I be quiet or should I speak? 
when he told you that victory was in your mouth, that you have the power to speak those things that are not as though they were. Restoration is already here. Now, whether or not you want it, it's up to you. If you want to be restored, I ask you to stand at your blessed feet this morning. Father God, I thank you this morning. Lord, I don't thank you for partial restoration. Lord God, I thank you this morning for kingdom restoration. Lord, I thank you that you know each person on live and in this building by name. Lord, I thank you today that you're doing some name changing. Lord, that you're changing names from defeated to victorious. Lord, that you're changing names from failure to victorious. Father God, that you're changing names from flawed to victorious. Lord God, I thank you this morning for the work that you're doing in this place. Lord, I thank you for not just a new name, Lord, but an attitude to go with the name. Lord, I thank you that we will be kingdom-minded that we will walk away today with the mind of Christ. Lord, I pray that every person under the sound of my voice will know their value. Lord, that they will know their worth in you, God. Lord, that they will walk upright in you. Lord, you promised to know, hold no good thing from us if we walk upright in you, God. Lord, we desire your kingdom restoration today, God. Lord, we want to be fit for your kingdom. Lord, we want to be fit for your glory. Lord, we want to be fit to honor you, to praise you, and to worship you wholeheartedly, God. Lord, we desire a one-on-one with you. Lord, I thank you today for the work that you're doing in this place. Lord, touch the hearts of your people. Lord, change minds. Lord, change hearts. Lord, change me. Lord, let a transformation take place in this house. Lord, we expect a move of God on today. Lord, we'll be so careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. If there's anyone today, don't mind the tears. I promise you they're tears of joy. I can cry before the people because I've been restored. So I'm not telling you to do something that hasn't already been done for me. He took an old sinner just like me and made me new again. He changed my name. And he also changed my address. Because here on earth is only temporary. But my name has already been written in the Lamb's book of life. So I have eternal life when this life is over. If there's someone in the building today who does not know the Lord in the parts of their sins, we ask that you come today so that you can be restored. There's someone in the building today who's looking for a church home. We invite you to come today so that you can be restored. And if there's someone in the building today who's looking for a church home, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Know what he said. I know what he said. I know what he said. He did it for me. He can do the same thing for you. If he did it for me, he can do the same thing for you. If there's someone today who's looking for a church home, I invite you to come. To not just be restored to the kingdom, but to become a part of Kingdom Life Church. 
We're looking for kingdom citizens. We're looking for people who want to be kingdom. I ask that at this time you come. Change, change. I'm so Praise glad. God. Has come over. Has come over me. Hallelujah. Come on, hands lifted. God will change you right where you are. Yeah. Sometimes when God is speaking. Spirit is moving. We know he's talking to us. But he's not only talking to you, he's talking to someone else. And when that person takes the, the leap of faith like they just did, it, it makes you stop and pause. But you knew that Holy Spirit was talking to you too. Here's what I want you to understand. Whenever God moves, he's not obligated to move again. So we have to learn how to move when he says move. It doesn't matter who's in this building. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you know God is talking to you, specifically you, move move today. I'm not talking about tomorrow, next week. No, move, move. If you need to be restored, if you need to be restored, if you know God is calling you back to him, why put off today? Tomorrow is not promised. The next second is not promised. And many of you, if you will be honest, you know he's talking to you. I'm going to give you another chance to obey what God is saying because he wants to do a wonderful change in you yeah in you in you so much more God wants to do in you through you will you come today this is my last appeal yes you daughter yes you son yes you sister yes you brother you know he's talking to you hallelujah hallelujah Come on, bless God as she moves. Come on, bless God as she moves. Hallelujah. I know there's a few more that needs to come. I'm just trying to give you time. God is so amazing that he would prolong things just so you can build up confidence to come. You know he's talking to you. Wonderful change. God bless you all. Thank you for your willingness to step out. I know it can be difficult because people be looking, you know. But most of the time, they need to be up here too. But I appreciate your willingness to step out. What you don't realize is you made a move today that's about to set some things open in your life. Yeah, because God's been waiting. Yeah, you've been praying. But God's been waiting. Yeah, for, for you to take just the first step. This part of the first step. And once you take a step, God is right there. He's been there all the time. Just waiting on us. See? A lot of times we want God to come and God says, no, I'm waiting. Leap of faith. I don't care what it is that you're going through. After today, after today, things are about to change for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah.
as well. It's not that bad either. I don't care how the enemy try to tell you or convince you that it's that bad. It's not that bad. You're here, not by happenstance. It's well, baby. You hear me? It's well. I saw you the other day. I saw you. Do you hear that? I saw you. suppressing a lot. Suppressing things. They don't have to suppress it. Amen. You don't have to let it go. There you go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You got a God that loves you beyond measure. A mother that loves you beyond measure. You know that? Yeah. It's well. be afraid. Fear not, for I am with you. Yeah. God is with you. Yeah. Here's what I hear the Lord saying. Minister, very profound message. Powerful message. Powerful message. And when you are in tune with God, God will all, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even want to preach because I know I wasn't supposed to. I'm at a place and space in my life now where I know what to do, when to do it, and what not to do it. It ain't about me. Please hear me. You have to be open to hear the word of God from whoever God is speaking through. Through. And when I called her the other day and told her, I said, be ready. She called me and told me what the message was. I, I just chuckled to myself. Because here's what I know God is doing. It's a season of restoration. I was talking to the kingdom uh, vision keepers the other night. And we was talking. And, and the man of God called me from Tallulah a couple of weeks ago. And he's an older gentleman. He's in his 70s. And he says, Pastor, I admire you. I know you're a man of God. What is God saying in this season? What do you sense God is saying in this season? Because with everything that's happening around us, you'll start hearing stuff. And people start saying this. We're in the last day. We've been in the last day. So there ain't nothing new. Well, the Lord's about to return. We know he's coming back. We know he's coming back. But well, why is all this bad stuff happening? Why is this shootings going on? Why people losing their lives? Why is all this stuff going on? Hear me. God is always trying to get his people back to a place of restoration. And he allows things to happen. He allows things to happen. I didn't say God did it. Because folks start blaming God for stuff. God ain't did all this. A lot of things happen because of the rebellion of God's people. We are some rebellious, stiff-necked people. And whenever we find ourselves transgression against what God is saying or doing, the Bible, it teaches us why. What she read today is telling us why. 
the locusts came because of rebellion. And God allowed it because he was trying to get his people to come back to him. And he always gives us an opportunity to come back to him. He restores. He says, I'll restore unto you the years. <laughs> so even when we're disobedient, even rebel against God, well, we could have died in that stuff. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. He allows us to come back Thank you, Lord Jesus. and restore us. True restoration is as if it never happened. He makes you better than you were before. Restoration. Keep reading that text. It says in 28, he says, in that day. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel that. Ah, in that day. My, my God. I'm going to pour out my spirit. That's what we need, an outpouring of God's spirit. Yes, yes. And the enemy knows that. So he's coming with all kind of distractions and all kind of things. To, to Even in this ministry, I'm, I'm experiencing all kind of distractions. When God is trying to shift us to another place, the enemy coming with all kind of stuff to try to hinder the outpouring. And I see it and I laugh and chuckle because a part of me wants to get angry. But another part of me say go to war. Yeah. Because it's a spiritual battle. Yeah. And this is my desire, that we would get to a level of spiritual maturity. That we can see everything that the enemy is trying to do. And when he come with that stuff, we quickly denounce it. Put him back in his place. Hell, that's where he belongs. But he said, in that day, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Thy kingdom come. You see how the word ties in? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In that day, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Hey, yeah, yeah. He says, your sons and your, your daughters shall prophesy. Yes. Hey, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Yeah. Hey, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy yeah your young men shall dream your young men shall have vision your old men shall dream dreams here's what God is saying the body is so connected we need everybody because there's so many gifts I need wisdom I need the elders I need wisdom I need the elders I need the dreamers but we also need the visionaries the young women that can carry out the dream the vision but it can't be done without the Spirit. He says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yeah, that's what I'm believing God, that our young children will begin to speak the things of God. Yeah, that we raise them up. Yeah, you're not too young to know God. You're not too young to speak. You're not too young to live for God. Hear me, you. Because the enemy is trying to attack them as well. Distract them. Detour them. Get them consumed with stuff that is not godly. Amen. The locusts. The canker worm. The pollen worm. All them different type of worms. All those insects. These allowances come in and trying to penetrate, irritate, frustrate you. God says, no, I'm going to restore. Because some of you thought you was losing, but God says, I'm going to restore. <laughs> yeah, it looked like you lost, but God says, you're not losing. I'm going to restore everything. Wow. Then you say double? Double. Yeah, yeah. Double everything that you thought you was losing. God says, I'm going to restore that and more. I'm going to do exceedingly. Abundantly above. Come on. All you can ask or think. According to the power that worketh in you. Do you yes. believe that? Yes, yes. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For 
this vessel. I thank you for this vessel. Thank you for this vessel. Thank you for this vessel. Thank you, God, for all the vessels in the building. Those who were supposed to come forth. Huh. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, it is. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Restore unto them, God, even the joy that, that was lost. Hallelujah. Yeah. Restore peace back. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace. Ah. Restore rest. Ah, yeah, yeah. Many restless nights, but God says you shall have rest. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Rest. See, there's a rest in him, sister. There's, there's a rest in him. He'll give you a rest. You, 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 you're not resting well. He'll give you a rest. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah, she, holy shit. Yes, God. Yes, God. There's a rest for the believers. He says, come, 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 come. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, 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 of sacrifice. Ah, where well, everything can be laid today. Everything can be laid here. Ah, let it, let it rest at the feet of God. Let it rest at the feet of Jesus. Ah. Ah. God says he's going to restore your rest. Yeah. He's going to give you peace. That no one will be able to interrupt. He's gonna give you a peace. This joy, yeah, this joy that you have, let it come out. You, you've been hiding your joy. You, uh, you've been, oh man, you've been weighted down with so much. Uh, lift your hands. Lift your hands. All of you, right here. Lift your hands. Ah, I surrender. Ah, that's what. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Lift your hands. I surrender, God. I, I release it to you, God. It's too much for me to carry. Too much for me to bear. But I know, God, you can handle it. Ah, my life is in your hands. My life is in your hands, God. Your plan supersedes mine, God. I know I messed up. I made some mistakes, God. But your plan supersedes mine, God. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, for restoration. Thank you for restoration, yeah. Lord God. Love is being restored. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. 
Forgiveness. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Forgiveness. Ah, God says, forgive as I have forgiven you. Uh, he says, I've given you grace. I need you to extend grace. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Release it today. I extend grace to you. Ah, whoever it is, whatever it is, I extend grace today. Yeah. And God says there's a peace <laughs> that surpasses your understanding. It's going to keep your heart and your mind. You can't lose your mind because you have the mind of Christ. Yeah. He's in you. <laughs> Which means you can't lose. You're a winner. Victorious. Victory. Ah, yeah, yeah. Victory. Yeah. Ah, hallelujah. Yeah. Belongs to you. Yeah. As well. I thank you for peace in this house. I come against every distraction. That hindering spirit, we cast you out now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. That division spirit, we cast you out in Jesus' name. That hindrance spirit, we cast you out today in Jesus' name. Love flows in this place. Love flows in my heart. So love flows from my heart to my brother, to my sister. This is a house of love. Yeah. Love flows. Yeah. Love flows. Yes, thank you, Lord. Love flows. I speak it over this house. I speak it over your life. That you are an extension of God's love when you walk out of this building, you realize that you are the temple. The Spirit of God dwells and lives in you. Wherever you go, you extend that love, that grace, that forgiveness, the same way he's forgiven you, the same way he loves you, in, even when we don't deserve. I speak it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. It's well. It's well. say that it's well it's well listen confess confess dear Lord God I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you raised Jesus from the dead according to my faith and my confession I'm saved I'm saved I'm saved in Jesus name come on bless the Lord on today amen Listen, we love you all. We already have the information. I was going to say I was going to get information, but I already have the information. So I just want to encourage you all to be encouraged. Stay encouraged. It is well. It's well. You ought to feel light because that weight is gone. And you better not worry. Don't pick it back up. You hear me? It's well. I want you to hear that. It's well. Pass the love. <laughs> Can you give it up for the messenger? What a powerful message on today. Hallelujah. I always said, I pray that something has been said, that your faith has been heightened and your outlook bright. We thank God for our youth. Can you bless God one more time for our youth? All of our youth leaders, thank you so much. Our praise team and music ministry, thank you all so much. Listen, a few announcements.
Uh, we did, for those who were, were not here on last week, we closed on our new church, so we're excited about that. Amen. Yeah. So, 2360 Lafaton Lane will, will be our destination. Uh, August, first Sunday in August. Uh, y'all don't sound like y'all excited. I'm going to show you how to act. Just wait. I'm going to show you how to act. Just give me, just give me, give me, just give me one sec. Amen. Come on. All right now. I'm, I'm going to show you. Look, I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. Yeah, so first Sunday in August, we'll have our first service there. And I'm excited about that. We, a few of the vision keepers we went over uh, the other night, sat and talked. It was a good time, really. I looked around. I was at rolled by. I was like, man, we've been here talking. It's going on 9 o'clock. We were just sitting around talking. I enjoy that, though. Sometimes just being around, sitting around and just talking. Sometimes most people get a chance to see me here. They don't get a chance to just see me chill, right, and talk and have real conversations. We had some real good conversations. Some things came up and we talked about a few things. Listen, when we took this leap of faith, I want you to know this. I didn't do it because of you all. I did it because God said do it. I did it because God said do it. In the natural, we should not have done it from a financial standpoint. But I know what All God right said. All right now. Yeah. So I don't look at finances. I rather trust what He said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are in a better state than we've been in a long time. Transparency. We let me dismiss because I don't want all this on Facebook. We thank you all so much for joining us. God bless you all for watching in. Don't forget to join us next Sunday. We would actually have start July will be the month of evangelism. So we want you all to join us. Invite someone else to watch us on next week. Amen. God bless you all. We love you more than God. Oh, we love you more than life. And we'll see you all next week. God bless you. Amen.